Hello and welcome back to another edition of West Ham Fan TV Hammer It Out podcast. Now this is a very special edition because um, we was briefed by EE e. and we was contacted by EE e., um, to, to produce a piece of content um, to... It was, it's the Hope United campaign, isn't it, Dan? Yeah, it's part of yeah, the Hope United campaign uh, discussing basically online homophobia. That's about tackling that and encouraging other people to call it out, basically. That's the what the campaign is about. Yeah, so we, we, we yeah we was contacted by EE to, to, to produce this piece of content, and I was very keen to do this piece of content. So we've been going over everything. They sent us some statistics and everything else. Um, it, it's it's the EE Hope United campaign, and we'll be giving you the website and everything else. And it, it's, it's full of loads of advice and, and, and loads of little nice videos and tips and tricks and, and everything else to, uh, to help combat online hate. But it's all about, for me, it's all about calling it out which is what we're going to talk about today and um when you're talking about homophobia look i'm not i'm not a gay man and, and dan is not a gay man so we thought we'd better bring um uh, members of the gay community into the podcast to give us you know that you know their, their their side of the story so from pride of irons i'm very proud to have you two on the uh, on the podcast today joe bailey uh, and jim dolan um the chairman and what are you now, Jim? Um, you used to be the chairman. I used to be. Now I'm just founder, which I think is quite a, quite a nice title. That's a nice title. It's a nice yeah. Title to have yeah. Founder. Yeah. yeah. That's I mean, don't have to do anything anymore, yeah. but I get a nice title. That's that's the title I've got for uh, my season ticket. Remember when I we signed oh, yeah. up? Yeah. We founders. <laughs> I've got that one yeah. from Upton Park. We've got a little badge yeah. somewhere. Yeah, we've got a little badge with founder on it. But but huge West Ham fans. Um, let's just talk a little bit about our West Ham history before uh, we talk about the serious stuff. Um, how did you both become fans? Oh, well, just was really, really. Claret and blue uh, wallpaper. It was just in the family, wasn't it? So dad played for West Ham boys back in the 40s, I think it was. So, you know, it's like, it just was. You didn't know anything different. So, yeah, I had no choice. Yeah. Did, did you grow up local to... Yeah, Stratford, 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 Stratford girl. Yeah, yeah, totally. Working class Stratford girl, yeah, yeah. Proud of my mm. roots as well still. Don't, uh, yeah, I love and hate the new Stratford as well at the same time. So I think it's been really good with mm. regeneration on some parts. But for something like, you know, I've had my old um, aunt and stuff in the blocks of flats that were moved out from the 2012 Olympics and stuff like that. So it's sort of like, you know, Mixed yeah, a lot of history. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, my, so. my mum was a, ca- uh, we're, we're from Canning Town. Oh, we're we're Canning Town. Um, my mum owned a calf in Hackney Wig, actually. Oh, right. Around the corner from here. <laughs> And they got chucked out because the Olympics. Yeah. So yeah, I've got a love hate relationship with it as well. Yeah. yeah. yeah so um, it, yeah, just through through through. Yeah, just, through just the roots. was. Yeah, Dad used to take me over there. I can still I remember the smell of the burgers and the grass, and that's mm. about it, really. Yeah, what, what year memory, was that, Joe? Oh, do you mean? Do you mind? Never ask a woman her age, do you? Do Come apologize. on, boys, <laughs> leave it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was back in the. Uh, um, well, really early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, my dad took me, yeah. Was it the um, FA Cup? I think it's one of the first games that I remember at Wembley. And I, and I was a baby. <laughs> 1980. Yeah, my dad uh, took me there. So yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. G- going up to 406 and that. And the, At least you've seen it. Car. I've never seen it. Yeah, never seen the trophy. I know. I can't remember it really, to be fair. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was a, it was an amazing time. I remember that. I can still remember the feeling. But I think that's what it's about with West Ham as well, isn't it? Seeing all the flags, seeing everybody that, you know what I mean? Seeing everybody in your colours. You know, it's your tribe, isn't it? At the end of the day. And yeah, I think that, that's why I don't get why people who have a pop of people who wear replica shirts. I'm wearing one now. Obviously, people can't see it, but people say, <laughs> oh, you know, wearing grown man wearing replica shirts. But like you said, seeing everyone, the sea yeah. of colours, sea of claret. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant. As long as they've not got an half and half scarf on, then then you're all right. Yeah, yeah. or a full <laughs> kit. If I came in with like yeah. shorts, socks, shin pads, you know, then it's a problem. <laughs> That's how you come in here. I like to tell you to put your trousers back on before everyone comes in. And, and Jim? Oh, mine's a slightly different route. Um, <coughs> so my whole family supports Spurs. Both, oh, both wow. Sides. That both must have been a tough week shell. for you this week. Uh, well, fortunately, I don't really talk to many of them. And my brother's probably the only one I do, and uh, he's all right. Like he don't gloat; he's not one of them. But um, yeah, like my mum's side, my dad's side, all my uncles uh, supported oh. Spurs. Um, but I hated football growing up because I was terrible at it. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm going to blame Spurs for it because my dad <laughs> bought me like all the shirts and stuff, and put me in all that, all the cra- these horrible photos of me as a kid in Spurs shirts. Um, <laughs> but I just, just didn't I weren't interested no my uncle took me once when I was about five and um it was at White Hart Lane it was uh, Southampton 
and uh, Southampton put three past Spurs and I was sort of sat there with all this shit that he'd covered me and like, he bought a little rosette thing and all, talk, all this tap from the <laughs> shop and I was sort of sat there and he looked at me and he went do you want to go home? I went yeah and we walked out and then Spurs finally scored you could hear the, the crowd mm-hmm. and I was like yeah this ain't, this ain't for me um, and then sort of mid 20s uh, I think it was about 23, 24 my mates all started playing football on a Saturday morning and I got dragged along basically because I could drive yeah. <laughs> so, um, and it was uh, around time we were the FA Cup run. Everyone was sort of like well into it. I knew enough about football to know that West Ham were not, you know, one of the the, the top four teams. But I just I got dragged into the the enthusiasm. I, I just got carried mm-hmm. along by the romanticism of like the underdog. And after that, just the next season went to I can't remember how many home games. I just bought like tickets for home games. And after that season, ticket ever since and. I knew that what I was bu- what I was buying into. I mm. knew I wasn't buying into glory. I knew that was a one off. Mm. But I saw the passion and I saw like the romance of it, you know, and it felt it felt right. So that was that was my route in. I was saying to you just before, Jim, I hear a million times a game. We're all West Ham. We're all West Ham. And then you see the abuse, the racism, the homophobia and everything else on the stands. Why aren't we all West Ham when it comes to that sort of thing? That's what I want to know. We're all West Ham until we're not, until it suit, until it doesn't suit you anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But like when the bloke bumps into you in the pub and knocks your drink over, oh, sorry, mate, oh, we're all West Ham. Yeah, yeah. fine. And you know, when someone accidentally, you know, whatever, you know, causes you an a-, a problem, it's all West Ham. Say something about, you know, any kind of discrimination. I'm not just say homophobia, any kind of discrimination, mm. all of a sudden... You're, you're a snowflake. Yeah, you're a yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the same as the England thing, though, isn't it? When we was in, in the World Cup, you know, and the boys missed the penalties. They was all family then, weren't they? And then suddenly we were in England. It's that same kind of thing. You yeah. Know what yeah. I mean? so. Or like when Andy Murray's British until he... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say that. You took it... Yeah, exactly. He's yeah. Scottish when he loses, he's British when he wins, isn't it? And, it? and that's how it is. When you're on my side, when your yeah. views align with mine, yeah, we're West Ham. But... Yeah. You know, if you're on a different political spectrum, then, you know, you're the enemy. And that's the problem, I think, I see. And yeah, like you said, we're talking about online, and online is where you see it the most, you know. And it's tribal, isn't it? That's you the... say it's political. Sorry, Jim. Mm-hmm. Like you say it's political, though. Yeah. And I don't even think it's really a political thing. It's just a difference of opinion and sometimes a lack of awareness as well. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's mm. it, you know. And I think a lot of people online think... when The people that call us snowflakes, ultimately, right, the whole of the LGBTQ plus community, they will call us snowflakes, but they are the ones, ultimately... I forgot where I was going then. They're, they're, they're offended by it. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. it's a really difficult thing sometimes, isn't it, to deal with? I, I was thinking about this earlier, like, because I mean, something came up on, online that I was watching, and it was about um, why do you see more people? Now? Why is there so many people with... And it wasn't even about LGBT. It was about why do you see so many people with autism? Why do you see so many people with ADHD? And this guy <laughs> did this video, and he was saying, basically, it's because nowadays... We don't lock people up in asylums when there's something like different yeah. about, and it's the same thing with LGBT things. There's more of us now, not because like any conspiracy, we aren't being left to die of AIDS by the governments. We're not like being murdered. We're not being put in asylums, and generationally, there's more of us because one generation ago those people weren't being locked up. You know, it was 1960, was it 1960 mm. that they that it wasn't it was legalized that you, people were stopped being yeah. locked up for being gay. Yeah. That generation had to get over being criminalized. The next one felt a bit more comfortable. Now we're in a situation where everyone's legally protected. So it seems like there's more of us. Yeah. There's not. There's not. Yeah. This is like the natural balance. Yeah, a lot of people had to sort of hide it because of society and, and, and the way it would, people react. And now there's a lot more acceptance and tolerance. People feel free to be themselves. So it, it just seems like people are going from the past, going, whoa, where's this come from? But, yeah. you know, now people don't have to hide. Well, it's first, first year, we've been uh, recognising the census, isn't it? You know, so we've never recognised before. Oh, so wow. yeah, we're I actually a statistic that. now. So, yeah, well. I know, an official one. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you what, let's, let, me, let me throw a statistic out, as you said, statistics. Uh, so, I mean, I'm not sure if you... Our, you know, much you know about these statistics, but uh, apparently almost three quarters, 71% of Brits agree homophobia is a problem in football, which rises to nine in 10, so 88% among LGBTQ plus respondents. So, you know, more people that are LGBTQ plus obviously feel it's a problem, but that's, would you say, are you surprised by it? Do you think that's a high number? I think it's, in, it's interesting, right? Stats can, can, can lead you down two paths. <laughs> One is that there's more of a problem. And the other one is more people talking about the problem. Yeah. And I think what we're seeing more of now is more people talking about the problem. 
I also think we've got so many people now who are, you know, would call themselves allies. Decent people, don't decent say people, allies. Who are call, I said people. who would call themselves allies, <laughs> <laughs> who, um, who, are willing to, to, who to, are willing to speak out on the behalf of other people. So, you know, if I hear something racist, I'm not going to be like, well, I'm white, so I'm all right. You know what I mean? So, and, and I think there's a lot of people who aren't LGBT who are the same opinion. So I think a lot of these stats are driven by the fact that, again, society is changing. Mm. I don't think it's a necessarily an indicator that things are getting worse. I think it's a, an indicator that people are more aware and they're talking about it more. Yeah. And, I, I, you know, I watched your piece, Joe, with the, uh, the BBC, and I think what you said, that there was an interesting point raised um, by... Uh, one of the people on there of, of that someone had said something and they hadn't realised and then they turned around and said to him, look, that's that's not on. That's, and they didn't have an Joe's awareness. Joe's queen of that. Yeah, yeah, I do that a lot. But I think it's down to the clubs as well when you, when, like, even when you're going away and stuff like that. If you know you're supported and there's a reporting system, you know you're kind of safe as well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But I am, like I say, I'm old enough and ugly enough now to kind of deal with things like that and yeah. I will call it out. I've called racism out before. Just be, not seriously, not even thinking about about it, just like oh my god I can't believe he said that when it was, it was a Spurs match though so I did think about it to be fair <laughs> yeah. but no it was Son you know and there was like yeah just yeah, someone yeah. says something and there was some kids down there as well and so I just said mate come on look we're not in the 70s leave it out and then since then we've got on like house on fire hello love how you doing mm. kiss every time I go to my seat and stuff like that you know and sometimes I think people are just not aware you know it's not about all the pointy fingers and all stuff like that it's just about conversations like this and I think that's key you know we always talk about the issues within football, but it's not. It's society. You know, football fans reflect society, you know, so it's all of us, ultimately. Well, I, th I think it's an important point you made there, Joe, because a lot of people, we get this comment online. And I, I mean, I don't look at our Twitter anymore because obviously I've just the damn, but, you know, people constantly <coughs> calling us grasses. And you're like, who have we grassed on? <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, like... I don't get the reporting app out. Like, like Joe said, she'll speak no. to someone directly. No. We talk to people. The, I know mean, there's some groups out there who claim they've helped people get banning orders overturned, which I don't know how much to, to put in that. But we actually have, because we work with people yeah. who have been convicted of homophobic abuse. We've worked with them and kick it out and got their bans overturned because they've gone through an education program. They've gone through the process. We're trying to help people back in the stadium. Our group exists to make sure that everyone feels welcome yeah. And it's not to kick other people mm -hmm. out. And if someone slips up and makes a mistake, that doesn't make them a criminal or a villain, right? We all make mistakes. If you'd gone back in time, if there was Twitter around when I was younger, I would have been cancelled 20 times over. Yeah, I think that's right? really the same for all of us. So, yeah. so, you know, it's not about trying to turn people into villains. And I think one of the things that really mm -hmm. bothers me is that people have got this problem this, or this, this, this um, idea of us as a group yeah. that we're out there to get them yeah. and we're not. Like you said, right? We're all what you said it, right? We're all West Ham, yeah. right? Yeah. So I want, I want to help you, not get yourself into bother. If it turns out that you want to, because you, you genuinely hold these views and you are racist, homophobic, whatever, then on your head be it, right? But at least I've had the decency, and Joe's had the decency to speak to you first and go, right, before you go and sing the Chelsea Rent Boy chant, before you go and do these things, yeah. this is what could happen. Yeah. And if you then choose to go, that's fine, right? This, you're, you're free to do that. I'm not telling you can't. I'm telling you, you probably shouldn't for your own good not yeah. for mine because mm -hmm. i ain't gonna go home and cry about it but you might get banged up and i don't want that yeah i think that's you know that's i think really important that you've brought that up because you're right no i didn't know that, that that you did that as a group and was was overturning bands and i think things like that people realize like i said you're not out to get them you're not out to grasp them you're not trying to round everyone up and people it's and i think the main thing it's about education like you, like you said, you know, in that oh. piece, it's people aren't always saying things out of malice. It's out of ignorance, you yeah, know, for want of right. a better word. You know? But even that that word, then education, you know, oh, I feel it's like sometimes it could be really patronising. Yeah, yeah. you're East not educated. London, ed yeah, yeah, right. You know, I didn't finish my education. Ultimately, I've got this accent that can't get rid of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So someone's pointing the big finger at me, and I think sometimes when we've been shown on clips and stuff like that, it does look like we're finger pointing because you're not getting the big picture. I mean, sometimes we can be filmed for like four or five hours 
for like two or three minutes. So sometimes it's really difficult to kind of get it across, you know what I mean? That we're not mm. out to ban people and have a go at people and just point the big old West Ham finger at them. Do you know what I mean? It's just a case of like, as you said, Jim, earlier regarding the CPS thing, you know, the, with the uh, Chelsea chart, you know, people, some people not aware that it's actually uh, an offence, a criminal offence, you know. Yeah, so yeah. we're basically just warning people and we're getting a bombarded with all this stuff. I'm like, hang on a minute. Do you think some of this, uh, do you think some of this unwillingness for some people to change the, their views and, 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 and the, the way they speak and, you know, I, I think we've had a discussion about the Chelsea chant before and, and you know, I was of the of the ilk at the time as, you know, is it that bad? You know, but if people get offended by it, but when you get it happening so much, you get accustomed to it. You know, and you get accustomed to. I remember, I remember the, the, the you know the Tottenham chants when I was young to sing them. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I was I was a kid, you know, running around Tottenham and all of this, and I used to, I used to sing them chants, and it was only probably in, when I was in my twenties I thought well, it's a bit it's a bit wrong there. I isn't think it? the words used there though is really important, right? Because uh, people think oh people are getting offended, getting offended, getting upset. If you shout rent boy, I ain't getting offended because guess what? I ain't a rent boy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. give a shit. Can like, I just say neither am I? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? I'm not I'm not offended by that, right? Mm. The Crown Prosecution Service has decided they in, its, a, in its wisdom that it's an offence, right? I didn't do that. I had nothing to do with that. I'm telling I'm trying what I'm trying to tell people is if you know, be aware of that, right? And then, yeah. it, like I said before, on your own head, be it, right? It's not about you offending me. You can say it to the No, no, I, I do understand. But, yeah. but, you know, I think that's the important thing for people to realise is, you know, we're, yeah. we're not doing It's not this. offensive. Yeah. It's, it's an offence. Yeah. 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 So that's it. So, yeah, yeah. it's immaterial if, if you find it offensive or you think it's homophobic. The, the law states it. So, if anything, it's, it's, it's not in any of our hands. It's out of your hands yeah. because that's what they've decided. And that's the, you know, like you said, if we want to continue to go to football, we have to adjust to it, you know, and there's so many repercussions for now with things like that where your clubs can get fines and all sorts of things like that. So yeah, I think that So where where did where did Pride of Irons come from? I mean what what was the, the, the catalyst behind creating the group? Um there was a, the so I was at a game with my um he's now my husband, my boyfriend at the time, a couple of mates, and uh, this geezer just started shouting all this homophobic abuse um at the ref. Really, but not like you know. I'm not a, I'm not a snowflake, honestly. <laughs> um, it was really nasty. Yeah, it was really, really nasty. Like, I'm guessing it's okay to swear here, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. He was shouting at the ref. I hope you die of age, you quit. Right. So nasty, yeah. nasty stuff. And I was sat there like, I don't know what to do. I honestly don't know. In a, if that was in a pub, if that was anywhere else, I would have had a word. But mm. you know, it's that thing of renewal amongst thousands of people. You know, if I say something, is everyone going to go, yeah, shut up? Or are they going to go, tell me to shut up? Yeah, and, yeah. You know, so to my to my shame, I kind of I said nothing. And then the guy shouted something racist. And then people were like, no, 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 mate, you can't say that. And then like the stewards came and it all got dealt with. But it just didn't stick right with me that, I, that I'd sat there and done nothing. So I just put it out on Twitter like, look, I think I, I should have done more here. I felt like if there was more people around me, who were like me, I would have had people to talk to. Because my mates, I mean, I didn't want them. They felt, I, I could tell they felt awkward, yeah. you know? Because, oh, should we have done something? And I said to them afterwards, no, you did exactly the right thing, right? Because you could have caused yourself some aggro. Um, so, yeah, just put it on Twitter and a few people answered. And then it kind of snowballed from then. It started off from a really bad thing. But then it's just become more and more of a positive thing. Because it's not about that bad incident. It's about this education program. It's about making, you know, that 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 thing that, that Joe did at the weekend with the BBC. Like there were people were saying, we only come now, or we only started coming because we felt like this group made us feel safe. Mm. So it's become a lot more. It started with a negative. It's become much more of a positive. Well, according to the statistics, you you said about you know when you created the group, it was about creating this. According to the statistics, four of five of us feel uncomfortable of hearing homophobic hate. At the football, yeah. and and so, that tells you as well. So if four and five have said I feel uncomfortable, the disparity between those who feel uncomfortable and those who are calling it out at the moment, and I think it's because of what you say. It's that that fear of you know if I call this out, who's on my side? Who's turning round and going like you said, you snowflake? And you just sometimes you just don't know really know who's around <laughs> you. Because all we talk about when you're at people around you is West Ham. 
Hmm? You don't know where, what their leanings are and what their beliefs are. And no. I think that's, you know, when you hear that statistic, do you feel like that's the reflection that people do feel like it's uncomfortable but won't call it out, you know? Yeah, I think that that's about right. But it's only when people are talking to the people that they're sitting next to, so it's a bit out of order, isn't it? That then it's like, oh, hang on, yeah. And then you realise more people around you kind of feel the same. You know, it's it's it. Yeah, it don't surprise me that statistic. So to be definitely. fair, is that all sports though, or is that just football? Do you know, this is football, I believe. Yeah, um, yeah this is uh, this is all based around football. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't it show though how far we've come that four out of five people feel uncomfortable with that? Whereas, weren't that long ago back at the back at the bowling where people were singing Lampard's fat Jog Jog was queer. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And that was yeah, a that yeah. and I used to sing that. <laughs> so yeah. like this goes to show like the yeah. crowd mentality. It's, it's it's not it's you know and this is the thing with the, the the education program we know most people aren't saying this stuff because they are hateful homophobes you get swept up there's psychological studies around yeah. this right when you get thousands of people together at any sports event any concert people become part of a a group you for and you do get swept up in stuff it's the lord of the flies effect yeah. isn't it yeah. Yeah. essentially yeah. yeah and plus yeah. you don't know what you're singing sometimes i sing along to things and i have no idea what the song's about mate's can you do not realize that's a pornographic thing you're singing about, right? <laughs> <laughs> i'm like yeah, the joke's like, yeah no, i know i did realize yeah be quiet don't tell everyone <laughs> yeah. yeah but it's that kind of thing you don't always realize actually what the actual meaning of it is and i think sometimes when you break some of these chants down and again the education thing i still sort of like really hate but i mean what's the word is there a word yeah awareness awareness I, yeah. I would say, but of course, you, education is key, of course it is. But I just, again, like, I suppose it's like the working class club where you feel like you're pointing at people but you, all the you're time. You're saying, like, you, it feels like patronising and condescending, which, yeah. I, which I agree. But then I think you need to be, like, um, open minded enough to know that you don't know everything. Like, yeah, I know that yeah. I don't know everything. Yeah, and and I'm happy. And I think this is not a yeah. football thing, it's a societal yeah. thing. Everyone needs to get used to changing their mind yeah. Yeah. and going, that thing I thought I knew, I was wrong. Yeah. And I think we all need to be, you know, that this, not just the country, the world is in a bit of a state at the moment. And I think <laughs> part, a lot of that is because people aren't just willing to go, do you know what, I found that new information and um, I think I was wrong before. Yeah. I, th I, th I think a lot of it is ignorance. And I think you can tie that sort of mindset into even even stuff with a football. Mm. You know, um, when David Moyes got re-employed as, as the manager, I was absolutely adamant. Oh, I don't want to see him anymore. Yes. I don't want to see. I was here the last time he was here, and he was awful. Get him out of this football club. And then, as time went on, and he, he, he evidently it's, it's gone, it's got a bit of shit at the minute. But yeah. um, but as time went on, and he, 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 you know, he reunited the football club, and he was giving us good times. You know, I was, I was absolutely wrong, absolutely wrong. But there are some people that I knew that were saying I would never change my mind. And about there's people flipped the other way now as well, and saying really nasty things you think hang on even though things are bad now i think i think possibly time is up for him yeah. but mm. that mm. does not take yeah. away from the fact he's given me the best two two yeah. and a half years yeah. of west ham yeah. like life i've had so yeah. i would never slag him off just for that he's given me that he gave me a, a semi-final in frankfurt like I did get attacked, but that's fine. <laughs> I was in the same bar. <laughs> I was in the, what was the bar? Oh, no, me and my mate stupidly went outside the town on oh, our own Lord. and got oh. jumped by five geezers. Oh, you oh, did? Oh, my God. God, sorry. But even that, right, I wasn't particularly hurt. And I've got the memory of that for, like, for the rest of my life that I went to, to a semi-final. Like, I'm never going to slag him off for that. Yeah. But you're right, people flip so easily. Have you got any personal experiences of, of you know, hate? Oh. At the football. Well, uh, football. Do you know what? It's a term, right? And you're going to say, oh, there's talking about snowflakes. You're going to say, oh, this is a snowflake thing to say. This is a woke thing to say. <laughs> but microaggressions, right? And uh, I think what it is, I've got different layers as well, being a woman as well, because, you know, I have to deal with misogyny as well, which is a really tough thing mm. for me to take. You know what I mean? But I think sometimes with like microaggressions as well, it's just the way that you just know that people don't like you, whether. It can do with religion or just, like you say, people have been in their own bubbles. I sense mm. it all the time and it yeah. can feel really uncomfortable. And I think that's a really difficult thing for a lot of the like teenagers and the people in their 20s as well coming to football are still kind of dealing with that now because yeah. they can't really explain what it is. It's just, you know, I mean, I've been attacked out of football loads of times, you know, like yeah. literally, yeah. I mean, my, my girlfriend's black and so she deals with microaggressions a lot. <sighs> She'd come from work and say... You know, someone said to me today, you know, you're being aggressive, which is, you know, black women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, things like, oh, do you tan? Um, oh. You know, things like that. Touching that, her hair, touching all that. Her, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All that stuff yeah. that would, 
you know, it to them, it's not openly racist. They're not calling her the N-word or something, but it's these little things that makes you feel almost dehumanised a bit. Yeah. It others you. Totally yeah, it other, yeah, exactly. And that is the same thing, that I guess, that, that you all go through as well when different totally. communi- communities and yeah. people, it's, it's so easy to not be aware of that, of what you're saying, because, yeah. you know, you don't see it, but... It, that can have as much an impact uh, sometimes yeah. at the building up as, you know, you're this or you're that. You well, know? you're right. Building up's the layers. And yeah. It gradually adds and adds and adds on and it can stop people doing things they love. You know, it's uh, tough. I, I will say, though, I've never been overtly singled out in person at football. And this, you know, a lot of, you know, the, this whole thing tonight is about online mostly, yep, right? Yep, that's, yeah. that's your brief, We're getting right? into that now, yeah. So in person, I do <coughs> not, I don't, you know, Right, sometimes in the summer you can obviously tell I'm gay because my shorts are quite short. Um, but it's like, his gold lame pants that it's do it. Gold I think. Lame pants. Yeah. Um, but like you know, I talk about my husband down the down the pub before games. I, I don't I don't like um, broadcast the fact I'm gay. Yeah. I don't, don't hide, hide it. it. Yeah. It's mm. just it, it just is. Um, I've never had a problem. Never in person. Like I get the thing Joe says. You can tell when someone don't like you, mm. and you yeah. can tell that it's it's, it's because maybe it's that. just me, but it could be that. Could just be me. Um, but you know, never, no, never overtly. And I think it's because actually most football fans and most people yeah. actually are decent people. And I think online, one gives bigots a amplifier, two gives them a shield, and three, it could be anyone. And I, and I don't mean to generalise, but you look at a lot of the locations of these people who are sending the abuse, particularly around Rainbow Laces, around you know, yeah. LGBT History Month, and they're not UK based. They're not people who go to match days. It, it feels like it amplifies the problem. And actually, when you think about actual football match day going people, I think the majority of them are probably sound. Yeah, totally. Well, it's funny you should say that it, it exuberates a problem because uh, nearly 40% uh, believe that social media ex- ex- exacerbates. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> exacerbates <laughs> the issue. Um, that is really small. I've not, I've, it's, not, it's not my brand. It's, it's not his really, reading ability. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, nearly 40% believe that social media exacerbates the issue. It's anonymity, isn't it? And, and uh, I mean, are we doing enough? You know, uh, and I've said this many times, social media, is that, you know, I know that we've fought hard for uh, uh, anonymous accounts and things like that, yeah. but there should be someone that knows who who everyone is. Mm-hmm. There should be a database somewhere because it's not just, you know, online hate. There's paedophilia and, yeah. and, 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 you know, serious crimes being committed on these. And, and, and you know, and, and online hate is a crime, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. These are crimes. These are crimes that people mm-hmm. are committing and they're freely getting away with it and we all have to consume it. And, you know, you get this culture of... of of these, you know, you know, so I would say most of them are teenagers, but they're, un- unfortunately they're not. Most of them men in their fifties. Most of them are men in their fifties. Yeah, that, that that like to to spread this hate and 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 to bring this toxic community together. Totally. And I think that's that's a big problem. And you well, can't Jim, win either because we had another mm. very popular West Ham account, you know, tens of thousands of followers who uh, decided to start retweeting our stuff, but putting like quote retweeting it. But saying their opinion, which was completely out of, like it was, it wasn't true, right? They mm. twisted what we said, and then we had everyone piling on. And you're like, what do I do? Because if I, they don't care about the truth, and if I answer to clarify or to correct, they're going to just twist it again yeah. and again and again. And so either you have to say nothing, in which case, and I know you had this recently, Joe. Yeah. You have people going, "Where's your answer? Where's your answer? Why are you hiding? You're not representing fans." Or you have to spend. <coughs> hours of your own life literally just answering to strangers on the internet who don't who don't want to hear the truth they don't, yeah. they don't want no, they to don't. hear the true answer yeah. from you they just want to bait you into more arguments yeah yeah and not, you can't win a majority of them have got sad little lives with nothing to say they're probably under the thumb at home a majority of them to be fair <laughs> probably don't go to games <laughs> no either. no no they have no idea about football or whatever else they're shouting about and uh, and that's uh, that's upsetting. But then it's not down to who's that down to. You know, we can't. You know, you can sit there and report everyone. And to be fair, my thumb gets really sore sometimes <laughs> because you know <laughs> repetitive strain injury. And I'm not talking about when they're just like we all see the sort of like the sick emojis and the poo emojis we always get, and we with rainbow laces and stuff. Mm. But with other things, it, some of it can be really quite cunt cutting, such as like you know, oh the L and the G's are all right, but it's them lot on the T's as well, like the trans 
community and stuff like that you know and it's it's just not right it's not acceptable it's like no do you know what i mean hate's hate at the end of the day i'm not going to take it whether it's racism homophobia or misogyny any of it it's just all bullshit you know if it makes people feel uncomfortable and like not to come to a game of football it seems crazy to me that you can't do something you love because like you were saying earlier dan all those little micro things all Quick building up layers, yeah. right? Yeah. Stops you from going for football, stopping your mates or your family going to but football. No matter what, it's crazy, isn't no it? No matter what these people do, they're never going to stop no. LGBT people going no. to football. No. Yeah. You may stop one, you may drive one person away, you may, they may get, have enough of it and just go, you know, I'm not going to slip. But you, you never, we're, like, <laughs> I don't want to turn it into like a, a, a chant, but we are, we're here. And we're not going away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We exactly. exist, right? We exist, and we like football. Sorry yeah. about it. Yeah. What, what do you um, think? Because I, when I, as you know, someone who's not in that community, my awareness of the, the online uh, sort of hatred towards um, you know that community is amplified when there's the initiatives, you know, Pride Month, whatever. You see the football teams; they change the badge to like the rainbow. There's rainbow laces, and then that's when you see in the comments you get people to go, "Well, wh- you know, why don't we have Straight Month? You know, wh- wh- what's this? We, you know, or some people go, I don't want my club to be associated with this. Yeah. You know, I see it a lot on certain, especially. But that's the teams. problem, isn't it? I don't mean to answer for you, but no, it's not their club; it's our club. Hmm. Yeah, regardless of our political view regardless of our sexual orientation regardless of our race it's our club we're all west ham amongst all of us yeah yeah back to the point you made earlier when you raised that that stat right it when i was saying like i think it's people call who would call themselves allies who are reporting <laughs> that's that's where that becomes powerful because then th- that's it, it can drag you down it can drag you down a bit when you see constant abuse sometimes you see replies of people and having a go exactly yeah, then you see the replies of people going if you don't like it, you, you know, f off out of our club. Yeah, you're actually, not a fan. You're not exactly. A fan. Yeah, and that and that's that's the thing, right? That's when you start to feel like a bit warm, <laughs> that warmth mm. in your heart, because you're like, yeah, the people who actually come to games, the people who actually are amongst our community, not our LGBTQI, but our West Ham community, they're the ones who have got our back. A quarter of those surveyed uh, have witnessed online homophobic hate firsthand in the first. In the past two years, that does feel very. Yeah, that's two years. Yeah, that's I think what that's I low. was thinking because yeah. I've definitely yeah. seen it. You've yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And I know, I'm see it on the daily. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. You yeah. know, you're ultra aware. So yeah, that. But I guess again, it, it all depends on what you're following and who you're following and what you're seeing. You know, that's true. Like if you're an LGBTQIA plus person who's who's communicate with other people within your community. Perhaps you'll see very little of it, but then mm. one day you may comment on something to a hashtag that's trending for another reason, and that's when it all comes in. Yeah. If, I, if we're talking about, I don't know, sugar babes, we're not going to get bothered. <laughs> if we're talking about West Ham, then we might get, get yeah. aggro. Yeah, and, and, and you know, for a lot of people, they might see West Ham post something saying, oh, it's Pride Month, it's Rainbow Lace. They might not click and go and take themselves to the comment section do you know what i mean so yeah. they're not necessarily unless it's someone they follow that's tweeting it and going oh this is you know they might not see it you know for for, for people yeah they might like. just do what i do if it's um you know if west ham is saying um you know happy eid or happy whatever i'll be like oh that's nice and scroll past yeah that's yeah. it click a like or something and yeah. keep moving um mm. so i guess that's probably where that statistic comes from of of people actually witnessing it but obviously people that are actually in that community you're not just witnessing it, you're experiencing it but on a constant basis i mean every time there's a campaign like the rainbow laces or pride month when well, i say it should be 365 days a year uh it's like oh, we all get excited because we know that we can just like celebrate as well the community which i think is a great thing to be able to do yeah. especially with a club and stuff like that you know and again it's a chance for awareness right i think it's really key but the thing that it, it is always worries about is here we go Okay, and I literally have to message the committee because everyone's got WhatsApp chat, right? So we've got the committee chat. And I say, oh, look, don't look on uh, this post on Twitter. You're okay on uh, uh, Insta at the moment, but don't go on Twitter because there's a lot of hate on it. Just just don't do it because it does affect people. It really does. I mean, Jim, come on. My, look, my, my husband's uh, saying, I love it. He says, you won't find glory in the comments section. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever... I've done anything, never read the comments, yeah. ever. We did Soccer AM a few years ago, <laughs> and 
didn't read the comments. Not interested. Someone else, and I said to her, it's the first time she's ever been on telly, and I was like, don't read the comments. No one who's got anything to say, <coughs> uh, or no one who's got, who thinks something nice about you is going to post. Anyone who wants to say something horrible about you will. Just don't look. She looked. And she deleted all of her social media. She mm. left the WhatsApp so for a while understood. because it really got to her. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I think you've got to make it, it's a bit different when you're running like Pride of Vines account. I guess the same for you guys, right? Running yeah. your account. Yeah. You've got a responsibility. And mm. unfortunately, when you run something on behalf of other people, you've got that responsibility. Mm. But if you're a private individual, don't read the comments. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and that's the thing. And, you know, looking at those initiatives, you know, when you see Rainbow Laces or West Ham, you know, changing their badge and things like that. Um, you know, Hope United. I mean, from your perspective, what do those? I think because a lot of people won't be aware is when they go, well, why don't they celebrate? You know, being straight and stuff. What What do those initiatives mean for you and and do for you as a community? Well, we notice a lot of like we get loads of messages and like lovely emails through as well, don't we? From like the the younger people. I like, give you an example, right? Because I don't know if people know, but um, West Ham United they do a lot of community work, right? Yeah. And one of those as well is sponsoring Essex Pride as well. So they go out and they sponsor it. Essex Pride and they just give us a nudge or we're not, do you want to come along so we just uh, go along with them but what's really great is that like you literally see like some of the younger kids in all their like different flags and that and I say kids I suppose about sort of like 17 to 25 right and they're coming along and they're like oh god it's West Ham it's football you what? And seriously, like, and, and we're as Pride of Vines are there to be able to speak to them sort of on the same level that the club wouldn't be able to, do you know what I mean? So, and you know, you've got Hammerhead and all that there, and then everyone's coming along and dancing the family. And people have then joined like Pride of Irons and, and come along to a lot of games as well because they, they thought that they that they couldn't have that anymore. Yeah. So it's that kind of thing, you know, and it's, again, it's about the awareness, isn't it? And, uh, I, th- I think like any community thing. seeing themselves reflected in yeah. football is, is an important thing. Like, yeah. One of the things, you know, criticism the club for many things yeah. but the community type stuff you know the engagement they do with any old irons like the over 65s making sure they still feel connected to the club even though you know times are changing the move stadium and all the rest yeah. of it but they still feel connected mm-hmm. um disabled supporters you know they they do the shuttle buses they do loads of, you know the, the sensory room all of that stuff um you've got um inclusive irons you know, they do all that stuff around like i say things like <coughs> Eid and and um um, I forgot the Hanukkah and all that kind of and all that kind of stuff. And I think it's really important for people to be able to see themselves reflected in football. I think like if you look at where we're based, not just now, like in, in East London, and you look at the ethnic diversity of the fan base, clearly we're not connecting with the local community. Yeah. Mm. And I feel like that's, it's not like we're doing something wrong per se, but clearly the perception is that this isn't a club that local people can support. Yeah. And I think these these kind of steps will hopefully make people who live around the stadium, live in these areas, feel more connected to the club and feel like rather than go and support Arsenal or Liverpool or whatever, actually, no, West Ham's on my doorstep. I'm going to go and support that. And I think the initiatives they're doing around that on cup games, I see I see the diversity more in cup games because they do initiatives. like they, they. I think that was part of the agreement. They have to give so many tickets out to residents, to yeah. Newham That's residents right. and yeah. things like that. And, and that. Come back to your question, right, it, about, you know, what does it make people feel to see this stuff? Joe, you see it all the time, right? People, you wear, you wear your Pride of Iron scarf with the, you know, claret and blue with the rainbow heads and you have people just come up to you and go, oh, West, West Ham, rainbow, like, oh, what's going on here? Like, it, 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 people connect the two parts of their, well, not just two, but the two parts of their, of their personality, like, or their, or their life, or their character is like, you know, I'm part of this community, I'm part of this community. And when they see them together, mm. They're like, I never knew, which I find amazing, by the way, at this yeah. point. Like, um, how long have we been going? For, oh, no. Forever. Yeah. But like, people still like just discover us and go, oh, what? I can go to football. Like, I mean, you always could. But like, yeah, yeah now you can come and, and you've got this community around you. Do you think football itself can do more? Because, there's, uh, you know, uh, we, we can sit here and, and talk about online hate and all that, all, all, all we want. It's still statistically true. There is very few openly gay footballers out there and and statistically they've got to be there's got to be gay footballers in in the men's game so, yeah. so you know no, there's no. there's openly gay uh, players in the in the women's game but in the men's game yeah. statistically not perhaps they're worried about sort of online hate and I, I pulled up something from you know one of our former players a bit earlier on you know something that he said uh, Patrice Ever I'm sure you've yeah. you've seen it but you know something that he said um, online, do, do, do these people need to be more sp- responsible, and, and can we do more? Oh, I, I would like to comment on the <laughs> Patrice first. Evra piece, right? <laughs> because he was here for what two months? Yeah, yeah. two, three months. Yeah, yeah a bit, right. a bit, a bit, a bit. and and this this thing happened just in that window that he was here. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. The same time that we had Hugo working as the player player support. Um, sorry, play care manager. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the the gay guy working with the players day to day, and we're yeah. we're led to believe they don't want to be around gay people. Mm. We did that interview with Mark Noble when he talked about Hugo and how having him around allowed the players to ask questions that they never would have thought they'd be able to. It yeah. gave them exposure to people to someone from that community they never thought they would. I believe Mark Noble over Patrice ever. Yeah, ever. Me too. I, I agree. I agree. I, I, it really yeah. irritated me reading that because yeah, like absolutely. that is putting a stain on our club that does not belong there. Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful rainbow for, well, maybe not rainbow. Let's yeah. keep it outside of LGBT. Well, yeah, everyone's. It's a beautiful, not melting pot either, right? I, I, I saw this brilliant thing in this woman who talks about racism quite a lot in the US, and yeah. people talk about melting pot. She says, no, the world doesn't need to be a melting pot. It needs to be a salad because you need to appreciate every single thing that's different for its difference. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I think you have that difference no matter what part of any community you come from. Yeah, it's agree. just about respect on a basic level. It's just about, you know, and I think sometimes the word offensive, that can be quite like, oh, here they go, they're offended by that. But how it affects you, you know, again, going back to the layers and all that kind of thing. So, and I think, you know, I mean, you were saying, Nikki, about can the can the clubs do more, essentially. Mm. I think little pieces like conversations that we can have as well that are put all over the stadium. I know you're always going to get the haters, but I think that does sort of raise awareness a little bit that yeah. there are different types within our community and we're not going out down to gay clubs we're just sitting at the sports bar, supporters bar yeah. having a having a beer and a cider dan obviously right for me uh but yeah that's a tip yeah. just for anyone if they ever see me in a <laughs> pub and if they this, i'm a cider girl uh yeah so you know it's that kind of thing i think it's i like you're saying it's 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 dispelling all the myths i think and yeah. and it's it is a very difficult thing to do i think that's that's what hope united is trying to look at what can the common fan do to support looking at this the last statistic it says the wider uk population is less likely to take action than respondents in the lgbtq plus community if they witnessed hate so i think it's 21 percent of of the wider uk versus 27 percent. i would always say and joe tell me if you disagree Go on. that no one should ever feel like they have to put themselves in danger no, mate, to yeah. show that they're a good ally right and, and i know this um the act is the active bystander mm. that, that terminology right yeah. just don't be an, act, an active bystander right if so if you see someone getting abused don't turn around and have a go at the abuser if you're worried just go up to the person being abused and say look mate you're all right or madam or whoever <laughs> you're right <laughs> i'm don't listen to him i'm here right be on the side of the of the person who's getting the abuse don't put yourself in any danger yeah show so solidarity you, yeah so yeah. you don't need to you don't need to uh, have confrontation with the abusers is what you'll say. Yeah, you can yeah. basically just yeah, like put it's like putting your arm around someone, vir- virtually putting your arm around the yeah. people that are. Uh, yeah, it's like that know. attack. If you look at it from a basic level, you know, you see uh, like one kid being attacked. Do you know what I mean? If someone else goes up to the kid, and literally, then you'll start. You know, it's like the playground, isn't it? Right, you'll start sticking around each other. Then that kid's not going to get attacked anymore, and it's like, oh, hang on, yeah, this is wrong. Do you know what I mean? So it's that same, like, exactly what you said. So it's that kind of mentality. And be really. and be visible, right? If you yeah. if you want to be an ally to a community not just an ally, LGBT community <laughs> alright but if you want to show <laughs> your support is cha- champion the word you prefer yeah tell him boys yeah, champion. Please, yeah. Um, like pop some pop some rainbow laces on or some kind of you know bad like some an- anti-fascist badge or anti-racist you know what I mean yeah. show, show some symbolism that you're there you don't have to do it by being like you, know, you don't have to trumpet it right just let people know like look I'm, I'm here if you need me but can I just say, when we're, we're talking about online abuse, right, I'm, I'm I'm not talking about, as I was saying earlier, the poo emojis and all the sick emojis, but I do say to people to block and report certain people if you see, like, hate. Absolutely. that That is the way that it's going to stop. I think that's what um, the, the Hope United campaign is all about. I yeah. mean, if you go to www.ee... Uh, uh, Sorry, oh, there you go. It's an easy glass. Yeah, I, I can't see it. <laughs> uh, www.eehopeunited.com. Uh, there is lots of tips and tricks and how to uh, to combat uh, online hate. And it's basically just saying let's let's call it out. Mm. Let's let's you know show solidarity. Let's mm. let's let, you know let's get a strategy together. And that's what Hope United are, are hopefully doing. Guys, thank you so much for coming in. And um, yeah, uh, uh, it's been an interesting chat. And hopefully, hopefully. You know, a few people are going to watch this and, and, you know, let's support the pride of Vions. Let's get behind them and let's show solidarity in, in, into into combating this hate because it's, it's you know, it's 2023. Come on, we're, 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 we're all different people, but we all support the same. Club. 
We're all West Ham. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And look, we're, 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 small, we're small like fish in a, in, a, in a big old pond and you guys are slightly bigger fish. So, you know, mm. people like yourselves having us on when this stuff does kick off, like having people like you to be able to say like, totally. no, that's not what they're about. That's going to help us like immensely. So thank oh, you so we're, much. We're, we're, no, yeah. Seriously, conversations are key. Seriously, like yeah. This. And like I said, I've I've learned so much about what your group is about, and I probably should have took some more time to to click and read and things like. But actually, conversations, uh, you know, are key. And obviously, look, we can't wrap this up without just before we go. You know, any last from each of you, last things that you feel like everyone should know and you want to leave us with. I, I would just say, look, I, I think we've kind of tried to summarise it. In, it this conversation we're, we're, we're fans like you and um, we're not trying to change you we're not trying to change football we just want to go football and we want everyone else to go and feel like they can without you know being uncomfortable in any way and, and feel like they're part of the family you know that yeah. that's the west end family the yeah. West yeah. End we family. don't believe in cancel culture uh, and if anyone sees me uh remember i'm a cider girl that's uh <laughs> that's the last word that's the that's the most yeah. important <laughs> 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 let's 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 finish it up by just just telling everyone where we can find you on twitter um i know you've got a website we've got memberships we've got donations that we can put in um yeah sorry if i put you on a spot no there, no sorry. no sorry, it's, it's all right it's uh pridevines.com or uh at Pride of Vines on Twitter. For some reason, at Pride of Vines LGBT on Instagram. I blame Dave for that. Um, uh, Dave Springer, that. <laughs> um, and yeah, basically just Google Pride of Vines. You'll find us. We're all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely. So yeah, go and follow the guys. Um, they're doing fantastic work uh, and bringing the LGBTQ plus community together. It's been a pleasure, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you um, for having us. No, no, thank you so much for coming in. Um, thanks, Dan. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, no, no problem. And, and a big thank you to Ehe uh, and the Hope United campaign. Don't forget, go and check out www.ehopeunited.com, uh, and we can all eradicate this hate. Let's get together and show solidarity. But thank you, guys. Uh, thanks for listening. Um, one thing left to say: we always say this, and it's come on, come your, on, eyes. Your, eyes. Come on your eyes. Come on your eyes.